Lesson 9.4c, Finding the Surface Area of a Composite Solid. A composite solid is made up of two or more figures. To find the surface area of a composite solid, we find the surface area of each figure. and We subtract any area not shown on the surface. And for the last couple of videos, we've used the surface area of a prism, the surface area S of a prism with base perimeter P, height H, and base area B is S is equal to PH plus 2B. That means the surface area is equal to the perimeter multiplied by the height plus 2 times the base area. Mr. Park built the birdhouse shown what was the surface area of the birdhouse before the hole was drilled? What we do is we identify the important information. It has a box gable roof shaped in a triangular prism whose triangle has a height of 4 centimeters and a 12 centimeter base. The lower area is a rectangular prism with a height of 10 centimeters and a base that is 15 by 12 centimeters. We make a plan. We find the surface area of each prism, then add. So we're going to find the surface area of the triangular prism, then we're going to find the surface area of the rectangular prism, and subtract the areas that are not shown on the surface. So what do they mean by not shown on the surface? Well, one face of the triangular prism underneath this triangle, if we removed this, there would be a flat surface underneath it. That's not shown on the triangular prism. And one face of the rectangular prism is not shown. This top part of the rectangular prism need to be subtracted. Underneath this triangular prism, whatever this area is, is identical to the area for the top of the rectangular prism. So now we solve First thing we're going to do is find the surface area of the triangular prism. So we can think of it standing on its side. If we turned it and it was standing on its side, we know this is 12 centimeters, this is 8 centimeters, which means if this is 8 centimeters, this is 8 centimeters, and now the height is 15 centimeters. We're going to use this edge as the height once it's standing on a triangle. So the perimeter would be 8 plus 8 plus 12, that would be 28 centimeters. The base area would be half of 12 times 4. This is 4 here. So that means it's half times 48, which is 24 centimeters squared. Our formula is surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base, the 28, multiplied by the height, which is now 15, because we're doing the prism going this way, plus 2 times the base area of 24. 28 times 15 is 420, plus 2 times 24 is 48. We get 468 centimeters squared. Now, we need to subtract the area not shown between the two prisms. Up underneath the bottom of this prism is a 12 by 15 area. That's 180 centimeters square. We need to take it away from the 468 centimeters square. We get 288 centimeters square surface area showing for this prism. We have this side and an identical one on the other side that we can't see. We have this triangle in the front and a triangle in the back. That is the only surface area that's showing, not underneath it, okay? So we're left with 288 centimeters square. Now we find the surface area of the rectangular prism. The perimeter is 2 times 12. We have one in the front and one in the back we can't see. And 2 times 15, this one here, and the other one on the right side that we can't see. That would be 24 plus 30. That's 54 centimeters. The base area would be 12 times 15, 180 centimeters square. Our formula is surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base multiplied by the height plus 2 times the base area. We get 54 
times 10 plus 2 times 180. We get 540 plus 360, which is 900 centimeters square. Now we subtract the area not shown between the prisms. If we lifted this roof off, we would see the flat area on top of the rectangular prism that's not shown because the roof is on it. That would be 12 times 15. It would be 180 centimeters squared. We subtract that from the 900 and get 720 centimeters squared. Now, we found that the triangular prism was 288. We know this one is 720. We add them together and get 1,008 centimeters squared total surface area. So we found the surface area of the triangular prism was 468 centimeters squared and then we subtracted that 180 that wasn't showing. But let's leave it at 468 for now. And the surface area of the rectangular prism we found was 900 before we subtracted the part that wasn't showing. Well, we could subtract the area not shown from each prism, like we did, or subtract them together at the end. We can just keep this area for a triangular prism, even the part that wasn't showing, and for the rectangular prism, then since we subtracted 180 from each of them, we could just add them together and subtract 2 times 180, which is 360 from the total surface area to get the 1,008 centimeters squared. So I hope you understand. The way I showed you previously in the video was we found the surface area of the triangular prism and then we subtracted the part that wasn't showing. Then we found the surface area of the rectangular prism and subtracted the area that wasn't showing and added what was left over. We could also just find their total surface areas and then subtract the part, the areas that are not showing together at the end because both of them had areas of 180 centimeters square that weren't showing because they were laying on top of each other. So we could either do it separately or together at the end. Let's try another one. Here we have a two inch cube sitting atop a rectangular prism. We need to find the surface area of the small cube. It's two inches for each edge. So if we did the length times the width for the base, we'd get two times two, which means one base is four inches square. Well, a cube has six identical surfaces. So we could just multiply six times that four inches and get 24 inches square for the surface area of the small cube. Now the surface area of the rectangular prism, the perimeter of the base is two times five, this five and the one that's hiding in the back, and two times six, this six and the one that's hiding on the right side. That's 10 plus 12 is 22 inches. And the base is five times six, that's 30. We use our formula and the perimeter of the base, 22 multiplied by the height of four, is 88 plus two times the area of the base, that would be two times 30, that would be 60. 88 plus 60 is 148 inches square. Now we subtract the areas not shown. The area not shown is the bottom of this two inch cube, which would be one of the four inch squared areas, and a little four inch square area in the center of the rectangular prism because the rest of the top is showing. It's just the little part underneath that's meeting the bottom of the cube. So we have two times four that we're gonna subtract because they're not showing. We have 148 minus eight. That means 140 inches square total surface area is showing on this composite solid. So I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. When a diagram of a solid figure has dashed lines, those dashed lines are the edges behind the solid figure that we can't see from our line of view, our perspective. And take a look at this one. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a cube missing right here. And even though one cube is missing from the corner, the surface area doesn't change because an orange, a green, and a red surface are shown for the cubes that remain. 
So whether it's punched inward or punched outward, it would still have the same surface area because the cube that's missing would have had an orange, a red, and a green face. So even though this rectangular prism has a cube missing, it's going to have the same surface area as if the cube were there. We're finished with 9.4 and moving on to 9.5 about solving volume problems. We're going to be doing the volume of a triangular prism next. We only have a few more lessons until we're at module 10, and there's only 13 modules. So we're getting close to the end of seventh grade math. So stick with me, have a great day, and join me for the next lesson. Bye.